either you know, my pants are on fire or my mic's not on one or the other. Um, 
Good to have everyone here this evening. Good to have you here. Uh, we will be honoring one of our Salem High School graduates tonight who is uh, going off to college with the Salem blanket, so don't let me forget Sam, okay? All right, <laughs> you can wildly wave at me if need be. Uh, but, but good to have everyone here. Just a few announcements. Um, we're collecting several things. One is uh, books of St. Dismas stamps for those folks in the prison system that are part of the St. Dismas congregation. Um, and there's a little box by the elevator you can put those in some Sunday. Uh, school supplies, and that's for the Lutheran World Relief school kits. And as you would imagine, things like blunt scissors and crayons and pencil sharpeners and, and notebooks and things like that. No loose paper, they say. Um, I should mention this just because of the weather. There is an Old Salem Christmas open house. Uh, maybe we need to think cool, right? But <laughs> they're giving us plenty of time. Uh, uh, December the 11th, if you wanted to know, from 11 to 3. And uh, uh, that'll, that'll do it for announcements. Anything else that needs to come before us? Okay, well, very good. I invite you to please stand for the beginning of our worship service. Our call to worship. In the name of Jesus who saves us, one God who sets us free. In the name of his spirit, one God who gives us life and faith. In the name of Jesus, Father, one God, our loving parent who made us all. Three persons, one God we worship. These words are actually from directly from Holy Scripture, from the book of 1 John. If we say we have no sin, we are lying to ourselves. Only when we face it can we ask God's forgiveness. God of mercy, we have sinned. We have fallen short of your law of love. We have fallen short in loving our neighbors, even in loving and valuing ourselves as your children. We have fallen so far short. Have mercy on us, forgive us, cancel our debts, and set us free. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Dear friends, God's word took on flesh in Jesus. God's love walked with us, taught us, healed us, and died for us. For this reason, your debts are canceled and your and you are made right with God by grace, for Jesus' sake. Amen. I am who you say I am. 
God's peace be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another. Peace to everyone. Peace, peace. Peace, peace. And now our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. A reading from the fifth chapter of Ephesians. The Apostle Paul writes, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our gospel is from the sixth chapter of John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do we have the... Okay, here we go. Um, I have a different gospel than what's in here, so I'm going to read mine, all right? I am the, this, Jesus says these words, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So yes, our gospel reading for this afternoon is once again from John chapter 6. This is week number 4 for that. And you may re recall that chapter 6 began with the feeding of the 5,000. Now think back. Jesus did not deliver a four-part sermon series on the bread of life before feeding the multitude. Jesus did not make the crowd sit down on the grassy hillside and give them workbooks and a lecture on the meaning and benefits of Holy Communion and the definition of a sacrament and why there should be only two sacraments and not seven. No, instead, with no introductory words of explanation, 
I'm quoting, he took the loaves, and when he given thanks, he distributed those to those who were seated, and also the fish, as much as they wanted. When I first came to Salem in 2007, I took communion to a homebound member whose daughter was always there with us in the living room sofa. And I invited the daughter, I mean, she was an adult, I invited the daughter to join in for communion. And before the daughter could respond, the mother said, oh, oh, she's not Lutheran. She was never educated about communion. Also on the homebound list uh, was another member whose son lived with her. And now he never joined us in, in the living room for our brief worship service. And when I offered to the mother that he should please feel free to, to, to join us in partaking of the bread and wine, his mother said, oh no, oh no, no. You see, years ago, the pastor at Salem would not confirm him because he was unable to read and write. He couldn't understand communion. In these verses where Jesus begins telling the crowds and us about giving his very self for us to eat, he's not concerned about getting them to understand. He's more concerned with getting them to eat. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus says, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. In these verses, Jesus offers to us his very own flesh and blood. The flesh which will be stretched out on the cross for the sake of all humanity, the blood that will flow from his hands and his feet and his side for you and me and for all people. Jesus is telling us the, the separation of his flesh and blood in his cruel and violent death on the cross is that very moment when he gives his whole self for the life of the world. In a way, this is expanding on John 3.16. You know that beloved verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life and may not perish. This is what giving his son looks like. Back in 2013, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA, at its churchwide assembly, passed a motion asking its 9,000 plus congregations to, to study the issue of opening up the communion table to everyone. You see, the ELC churches were governed by the policy that all baptized believers were welcome to participate in Holy Communion. You did not have to be an ELCA Lutheran or even a member in good standing of any Christian congregation. You just needed to have been baptized. That was, that was what got you in. This was seen as inviting and welcoming and even some viewed it as radically hospitable. On more than one occasion, at both regular Salem worship services right here, and especially at funeral services, when there were often Christians in attendance from other traditions, people would tell me, they would share with me how grateful they were that they had the opportunity to join in and receive the bread and wine of the Eucharist. I especially recall a woman saying to me, thank you, how wonderful it is to have this opportunity to receive communion with you all. I am going back to New Jersey and tell Father Leo, why can't we baptize? Why can't we commune all the baptized? Well, with that as background, Salem took up the challenge from the ELCA and we scoured, we read Holy Scripture looking for that prohibition of sharing Holy Communion with all people. And we could not find it. We explored the Lutheran confessional documents for a prohibition of sharing Holy Communion with all people, and we could not find it. But instead found in the Augsburg Confession the statement that Holy Communion can create faith. And if we believe that, if we believe that Holy Communion can create faith, then who are we to deny Holy Communion to anyone? 
So we adopted the rule for our Salem congregation that all are welcome to the table, no exceptions. Regardless of whether you were baptized or not, all are welcome. Now I will confess to you, as personally convicted as I was that this was not only God-pleasing but the right thing to do, nevertheless, we here at Salem were in violation of the ELCA policy clearly delineated, delineated in the document, The Use of the Means of Grace. Very soon after we adopted this new practice, I bumped into the Delaware, Maryland Synod Bishop, at that time, Wolfgang Hertz Lane. And I shared with the good bishop what Salem was doing, that is, we were breaking the rules. One of the few rules that the ELCA has. And he looked at me with an air of gentle exasperation and said, Eisendorf, didn't Jesus commune Judas? And he left it at that. But you know, as important as it is that our Holy Communion table is wide open to all people, perhaps even more important, more important is the aspect of Holy Communion is Jesus' promise. Jesus does not instruct or explain, Jesus promises. Jesus promises that whoever eats the flesh and drinks the blood of Jesus, the Son of humanity, has eternal life now and will be raised up on the last day. Jesus promises to provide food for the life of the world, his very flesh and blood. Jesus promises to nourish the world with the gift of himself. For the flesh and blood of Jesus, his incarnate life, his enfleshed life, and his very real death on the cross, is life-giving food for us and for all the world. Jesus nourishes our faith, Jesus forgives our sin, and Jesus empowers us to be witnesses to the gospel. Jesus promises us eternal life. For in Jesus, the Word made flesh, and in the sacraments, not only Holy Communion, but also the sacrament of Holy Baptism, which we're going to be doing tomorrow at the 11 o'clock service. We'll be baptizing Daphne Michael Capano. These sacraments give the Word physical, visible, tangible shape and form. Water, bread, wine, grape juice. We experience... God who will be satisfied with nothing less than our whole selves. In the words of the institution that we'll be doing very soon during the great Thanksgiving, we will hear the words, do this, do this, not understand this, not possess a doctrinal comprehension of the sacrament, not be worthy to partake this, not believe all the right things about me, do this, eat. Trust in Jesus' promise that you are forgiven, that you are nourished, and that eternal life is yours. For eternal life does not come through intellectual discernment or believing the proper things. Eternal life is abiding in Jesus and Jesus abiding in you. Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Eternal life is to remain in Jesus and for Jesus to remain in us. Embrace the mystery. Embrace the promises of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen.
statement of faith together. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death you are God, we worship you. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of relationship. Our relationship to you through Christ Jesus and our relationship with one another grounded in Christ's saving love for the world. Thank you for the gift of Holy Communion that nourishes us and strengthens that relationship. May we embrace the promise of forgiveness and eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of summer blessings, thank you for the bounty of gardens, orchards, and farms. Thank you for the abundance of the sea in the Chesapeake Bay. Help us become more aware of the immediate actions we all need to take to, take to protect our planet. Bless the work of Salem's Guardians of Eden and bless our Synod's creation care team. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, 
Strengthen all who work for justice between nations and peoples, who combat prejudice and bias. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis. We pray this day for the people of Afghanistan and the people of Haiti. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of boundless compassion, rain down your healing mercies on all in need. For the hospitalized, those in rehab, recovering at home, those seeking freedom from addiction or fleeing violence and oppression, the lonely, the imprisoned, the homebound. Strengthen the hands and spirit of all providing medical care. And we pray for the end of the COVID epidemic. For whom else shall we pray today? We also remember in our prayers today, Shore Brooks, Sherry Kravitz, Peggy Medicus, Marilyn Timmel, Kay Vandenbosch. We pray for those enduring the wildfires in the Western United States and pray respite for them and safety for all the firefighters. We give thanks for the baptism of Daphne Michael Capano, who will be baptized here tomorrow. We rejoice with Steve and Lisa Schaefer on the birth of Lily Ann Schaefer, granddaughter of Rusty and Robin Schaefer, who was born on August the 13th. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of comfort and consolation, bless all who mourn the deaths of beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrected life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your loving hands, O God, we commend you all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Savior and Lord, and let the people of God say, Amen. And while we're standing, I'm going to call Sam Goonlock forward. Sam, I want to present this blanket on behalf of your sisters and brothers here at Salem. And um, uh, this was made by Val Ponsini and Shelley Wolfram. Uh, so uh, I hope that, uh, I don't think you'll be using it anytime soon, but um, unless it's to wipe the sweat off your brow, but uh, uh, hopefully um, it will be a, a, a comfort in the winter months and a reminder of this congregation that holds you in prayer. So let us pray together. O God, who creates us, who forms us, who feeds us, who grows us, who sends us out into the world, and who promises to be with us to the very end of the age, be with your servant Sam as he begins his college career, as he begins really a new life with new challenges, May this blanket be a sign of our love and our care and that we are proud of him and, and hold him in our prayer life. May, may this blanket provide warmth and comfort as you comfort us in our life together in Christ Jesus. Be powerfully present with him throughout the years. Bless him and keep him. Make your face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. Look upon him with your favor and give him peace. And again, let the people of God say, Amen. Congratulations, Sam. God's blessing. And now let's say our offering prayer together. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name. The night when our Lord Jesus was handed over to sin and death, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people, people everywhere, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just a word about distribution. We'll, uh, you'll come up the center aisle and... Uh, um, Ray, can I ask you to, to uh, give us a hand here and come up and do the, the wine, please? Um, and I will gently drop a piece of bread into your cupped hands, and then you can come over and pick up grape juice, which is the dark, kind of purpley uh, cups. The lighter cups are the wine, and then Ray will bless, will bless your cups. You can uh, put the cups in the little white bowl at the end there and then return to your seat. I apologize for it. It's kind of a... <laughs> It's kind of a long trip around, but it, it, it'll save you from having to, to navigate the, the, the wires and things. It's much, much safer that way. Um, I think that's it. Is everybody, everybody cool with this? Okay, good. Well, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, come, let us celebrate the promise together. Amen. Ray, you want to?
invite you to please stand as you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. And now receive this blessing. The blessing, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, journeys with us, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>